Re Representative Cleveland, Brigadier General Alford, Mayor Phillips, Superintendent Stout, Dr. Burlingame, Mr. Cotton, Mr. Chafee, Sheriff Miller, County Commissioners, Presidents Heatherly and Legan, distinguished guests, friends of the Chamber of Commerce, welcome to Marine Corps Air Station New River and the Jacksonville Alonzo County Chamber of Commerce 23rd Annual State of the Community Breakfast. I'm Colonel Russell Burton, the commanding officer of this air station, and wish to thank the Chamber for the opportunity to host this event again this year. I'm excited and honestly a little bit nervous about the new format this year, but hope it generates the uh, dialogue that uh, the Chamber is looking to get. Before we begin, I'd ask that you join me in a round of applause for Janet Bowen, who puts this event together, and Miss Diana Hansen and the staff of the New River Officers Club. For the meal and the hospitality today. Again, welcome, and uh, let's begin. <coughs> On behalf of the Chamber, Board of Directors, the Governmental Affairs Committee, I want to thank you for joining us this, uh, this day for the 23rd State of the Community Address. This event would not be possible without the support of our longtime sponsor, Jones Onslow Electric Membership Corporation. I also want to acknowledge the hard work of our lead staff person for the event, Janet Bowen, our Finance Director and Governmental Affairs Manager, and staff members Sabrina Thomas, Kristen Lofton, and Melissa Maloney for their assistance. Several of our elected officials are here with, this, with us this morning, and I want to recognize them and thank them for the hard work and service to our community. When I recognize you, please stand, hold your applause until they all uh, have risen. Representative George Cleveland, Onslow County Commissioner Chairman Jack Bright, Commissioner Royce Bennett, Commissioner Paul Buchanan, and Commissioner Mark Price. Thank you for joining us today. Also with us this morning, Sheriff Hans Miller, Mayor Sammy Phillips, Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Mike Lazar, City Councilman Bob Warden, Brian Jackson. Thank you for joining us. Onslow County School Board Chair Pam Thomas. I thought I saw Pam. Oh, there's Pam. Hi, Pam. You blended in very nicely. <laughs> School Board members Earl Taylor, Paul Wiggins, and Bob Williams, and Joel Churchill. Churchill? Well. well. <laughs> nice penmanship. And lastly, we want to thank Marine Corps Air Station New River for hosting the event and the staff of the Officers Club for everything they do. Colonel Russell Burton, Commanding Officer of New River, you should be proud of everything they do. Thank you very much. And now for remarks from our sponsor. I want to introduce Steve Goodson, and he will, will be representing Jeff Clark this morning. Steve, where are you? You're on. <laughs> The Svelte Steve Goodson. So did not believe in well as well. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of Jeff Clark, the employees, the board directors, and the staff of the Jones Onslow, just want to let you guys know that we are extremely proud that we can partner with this community uh, to sponsor this event and other events. Um, we're glad we can partner to, to provide you guys in this community with safe, affordable, reliable power, um, even though maybe January and February you didn't feel like it was very affordable. <laughs> um, but um, your bills were, were correct, by the way. So, um, and anyway, Ricky Moretti's not here today, so if you had a problem with your bill, just call Ricky and he can, and, <laughs> and, uh, he can help you. Um, one thing I do wanna, I do wanna say is, uh, Traditionally, in the old format, when the speakers got up and, um, and spoke, 
they recognize the staff, their staffs. They, they, they always claim that, you know, their staffs, you know, are a reason they're up here and able to do what they can do. So I want to recognize the staff that I work with. My peers, they're sitting at this table right here. Um, these guys, as well as Ricky and I, Go to bat for you. Go to bat for the for the co-op for the membership, and we try to look out for your best interest every day. So if they're probably not going to want to stand because they they like a, to be behind the limelight a lot. But if the Jones Onslow staff could raise their hands or stand or do whatever, guys, y'all do that. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> the last thing that I want to say about the staff is, and I'm going to embarrass this person. Um, if you know anything about James Onslow, the, 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 the mantra about when you go to work there is that you die. You die before you retire, you, know, you retire or die. You just, it's a great place to work. Uh, we have, uh, you know, great, great board of directors, great, great leadership. Uh, and we actually have uh, an employee that's retiring next month after 37 years of uh, starting off as the administrative assistant to the CEO or the general manager at the time, I think. And she moved up through the ranks and she's retiring next month as vice president of human resources. So I just want, Shirley, will you stand up? Shirley Cox with Jones Island. So I just want to give you a round of applause. So thank you guys again. Uh, we're, we, we are once again honored to be able to, you know, to be a part of this. Uh, and as long as Janet uh, and the chamber keep asking to us to do this, we will. So thank you guys. It's my privilege to offer an invocation and introduce the panelists to my left and your right. If you'll join me in prayer for just a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our community, this important event, and all who are present here today. We ask your blessings upon our community and today's program. Lord, we ask your blessing and wisdom to overshadow our civic, military, and community leaders. Keep them and give them grace and strength for their service. Finally, we thank you for the food we have received, those who prepared it and served it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Today, it's my privilege to introduce to you people that need no introduction. Isn't that ironic? To my left, our uh, facilitator today is John Chafee, who is the CEO of North Carolina East Alliance. We have with us Brigadier General Julian Alford, Commanding General of MCI East, Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune. Colonel Russell Burton, you've heard from him already today. CEO of Marine Corps Air Station New River. We have David Cotton, Onslow County Manager. Dr. Penny Burlingame Deal, Chief Executive Officer of Onslow Memorial Hospital. We have David Heatherly, President of Coastal Carolina Community College. Sammy Phillips, the mayor of Jacksonville, and if I'm not mistaken, hiding way down there, Rick Stout, superintendent of Onslow County Schools. A fine lineup, and it's my pleasure to hand it over to John. Enjoy the rest of today's program. Thank you very much, Cindy. Uh, it's always uh, great to be back in Jacksonville and Onslow County, in particular in terms of Marine Corps Air Station, New River. Uh, amazes me every time I come in terms of it seems like something changes um, for the better. It's amazing in terms of the amount of development that's taken place here over the years. So uh, congratulations to uh, the leadership here in terms of uh, uh, guiding that growth and uh, achieving great success. It's my, um, it's my challenge actually to manage this group this morning. Um, General Dickerson was surprised that I showed up this morning after our conversation last night, but um, you know, on on with the on with the uh, the charge at, at hand. So, the 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 deal is um, every speaker is going to have an opportunity. We're going to go by the various categories. They have about two to three minutes to be able to uh, uh, speak to that particular topic, and then we move along. So, um, uh, wish me well, wish our panel well, and we'll get on with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> start out, is this mic on? Can you hear me now? Good. Um, we'll start out with that topic in terms of the um, accomplishments, in terms of what has everybody seen in their respective realms. Um, General, would you like to start with that? Is that with me? Yes, sir. All right. 
Uh, I'd like to start to say thank you for having me here with the chamber and um, look forward to uh, giving some highlights of what what we do here at Camp Lejeune and New River Cherry Point in particular. Um, so I'm in charge of, uh, of six different bases. I'm the CG of Camp Lejeune, but I'm also uh, the CG of Marine Corps Installations East. And four of those six bases, which is uh, Lejeune, Cherry Point, New River, and Buford, are the bases, the platforms for 2MEF. And that's why we exist, period. We're, we're platforms for 2MEF to prepare and go to war. So uh, over this past year, talk about uh, what the MEF has done. You, you've continuously had uh, Marines deployed all over the globe. Uh, we have a Marine Expeditionary Unit that's in uh, the Central Command most of the year. Uh, we have uh, Task Force Southwest, which is in uh, Helmand Province in, in Afghanistan. Almost 500 Marines, <coughs> commanded by one star uh, out of the MEF, are there right now. Um, you got the Black Sea rotation, you got a force in there, and then you also got the Special Purpose MACTAF Africa, that is a reaction force down into the northern part of Africa. And then uh, finally, you have uh, a force that, that goes into, we call it UDP, Unit Deployment Program, into Japan, into Okinawa, and then a force into Europe, and right now they're in uh, Norway. So as you can see, uh, this map is uh, all over the globe um, and prepared to go against our enemies if need so. The map also uh, was part of the, the uh, hurricane relief down in Haiti and uh, in Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands. Um, for a period of time, we had all of our, all three of our Marine Expeditionary Units out. <coughs> Two were down in, in the, uh, taking care of the hurricane and one in the Central Command area. So um, that's what we do here. And that's what, I wanted to start with that. That's what's most important about what we do. Uh, some, some good news of this past year is, is some of our uh, construction projects we've had. Uh, the, the base uh, has over 120 projects ongoing. Uh, both at Lejeune and New River. Uh, and this past year, we, uh, the value was about $157 million and projected for this coming year in 18, about $200 million worth of projects. So uh, that's positive for, for us and the community, I would think. Um, I'll stop there and uh, pass it down. You're a good man. Yep. Well, you made it easy for us to get started. <laughs> You're right, you hit the most important parts in terms of what's going on in terms of uh, MCIEs, thank you very much. Uh, Colonel Burden. Uh, good, good. Well, I was uh, informed last <laughs> night that uh, I have to use a temporally uh, neutral uh, greeting, so uh, uh, good day. Uh, <laughs> uh, with the context that uh, General Offer just gave you, um, I think the last year at uh, New River, we've taken uh, really kind of an introspective look at things. And uh, we, we've put a lot of effort into realigning our workforce into functional areas uh, to try to find efficiencies uh, as well as to provide better services uh, to those Marines, sailors uh, who were going out into harm's way and their family members that remain back here to take care of those. So we put a lot of effort into that and I think we're finally starting to see uh, some fruit be born from, uh, uh, from those efforts there. Uh, Another thing I think is kind of uh, interesting that, that uh, we did um, uh, is in the area of energy. Um, we started an energy audit uh, of the air station and uh, you know most of us go outside every day and we take out the garbage or something like that and we see a meter on the house that, that's spinning at, at a rate. Well we didn't have that on the buildings around here and you can you can imagine some of these hangars as big as they are they have huge what they call energy intensity, the energy <coughs> per square foot that they use and that sort of thing. But we really had no, no idea how much energy we were consuming. So we put forth a lot of effort into a campaign plan to bring some awareness to things, to actually baseline where we, we are in our energy consumption and all that. And uh, we wound up cutting about 24% out of our highest users, uh, the energy consumption just, just in an awareness campaign and, and establishing that. We've taken that, it was so successful, we've taken that to the point now where I think we're going to offer monetary incentives to those who um, are the biggest uh, uh, 
energy bees, if you will, of, uh, on the air station there. So we're going to, uh, we've established a program where we can offer uh, funds in their unit, unit uh, family readiness funds for uh, things they can do for that. So uh, those are the things that I, th I think uh, 2017 I'd really like to highlight. Pretty significant accomplishments. I looked and saw you've, over the past couple of years, you've actually had a 50% reduction in terms of energy consumption, which is, which is really pretty phenomenal. Thank you, Colonel. Um, I'd like to go ahead and sit down. You mentioned in turn to the, the issue about workforce and a lot of focus on workforce. So the Marine Corps has uh, got a proud heritage in terms of well-educated um, people, and we're always challenged in terms of finding, being able to find talent no matter the organization. So I want to really skip down to the very end of the table and ask Rick Stout to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in terms of Onslow County school system, in terms of that production of talent, whether they go into the Marine Corps or take off in a different direction. Uh, thank you. Um, well, uh, another year of growth for us. Um, we're about 26,500 strong. Um, challenges on that is obviously continuing to find the space and, and work with our General Assembly and, and letting them know uh, how big Onslow County is down here. But our partnership with the military is um, first and foremost, uh, probably I think we uh, recognize that throughout all my associations and talk about how big that partnership and, and being part of that team. 36% uh, of our student population is connected to the military. So um, it's, it's a very big part for us. And one of the biggest things that we were able to do in the last uh, year or two is not only open up school, but open up a virtual uh, academy that actually addresses some of those needs that when, you know, we have transition in and out uh, every year through students. And we're able to meet some of those needs by offering those classes. And we have a 25% turnover rate um, a year on teachers. I don't know if people realize we almost hire 400 new employees every year uh, through our transition. Our HR department does a ph phenomenal job in bringing qualified um, people in to do a great job. So we're, we're constantly staying on our feet, and, and our relationship with the county commissioners has been also great. Um, uh, working with all the agencies, our communication with the, um, our police department, both county and city, um, makes a big difference for us, especially in today's uh, society when we have things happening almost every day. Very good. Thanks, Rick. Um, taking that next step, uh, David Heatherly, um, would you like to tell us a little about uh, what's going on at um, Community College? Thank you. It's been a good year. Um, as one of the 58 community colleges in the North Carolina system, yours ranks 14th in size this year, and that does tend to vary from year to year depending on enrollment but 14th in size, serving approximately 6,400 credit-seeking students last year and around 8,400 non-credit-seeking students. And I would have to say it is a tribute to the over 650 employees at that institution uh, on the performance of our students year after year. A major accomplishment this past year has to do with our performance measures and how our students actually uh, did, did in fact uh, uh, stand as far as the state uh, report is concerned. In, t in 2001, performance measures were implemented for the system. And all but two of those years since that time, your college and the performance of our students on Western Boulevard has been at the top of the system. And that, I believe, is a major accomplishment by your institution. Also, approximately, well, every 10 years, uh, community colleges are reaffirmed or considered for reaffirmation as an accredited institution. I hope it does not surprise you to know that your college is, in fact, an accredited institution. But a little over 10 years ago, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools went through that process with, with our college. And uh, after, after a, a, a visit from a team of experts, it was determined that there were no recommendations for improvement to the community college at that time. That uh, is something that my predecessor, Dr. Ron Lingle, indicated was something that was at the highlight, uh, the high point of his career. And if you fast forward another 10 years to this past fall, another visiting team from, uh, state, from six different states outside of North Carolina came and talked with our students, faculty, and staff over a three-day period, <coughs> and they too indicated that we have no recommendations for Coastal Carolina Community College. 
So it, it makes me a little nervous. <laughs> I, I would be lying to you if I told you it didn't make, make me a little nervous to, to be at the top uh, because some might say well, the only place you can go is down. But, but I, I think it is a tribute not only to the, the students, faculty, and staff at the institution, but to you, this community, and all the folks at this table uh, for making this institution what it is. It does not happen overnight. It has been a long process, and it has been one of cooperation and opportunity and success. And I thank you. Oh, and Penny. Penny told me I should mention this. Uh, I wasn't going to. So if I go past three minutes, it is Penny's fault. Um, for I'll give him my time. Since, <laughs> since, uh, since uh, around 2010, with the economic downturn, uh, at that, at that point, most community colleges saw a major increase in their enrollments. Uh, and since that time, though, uh, enrollments have incrementally decreased. That's typically what happens after an economic uh, boom. Or, or, and it, but in this past fall, for the first time in eight years, your community college did experience a slight increase uh, in enrollment. And she told me that was substantial, so blame her if you're not interested in that. <laughs> but, but that is atypical. Uh, most of the community college system, uh, the, the colleges within the state are down in enrollment, but uh, not, not so with Coastal Carolina. Does that mean, um, Ms. Penny, that uh, health care is driving that surge in exactly enrollment? Exactly what it means. There you go. So, uh, you, so you have the floor. Take it. <laughs> You know, as to identify two or three things that we're proud of was really difficult because there's so many things to be proud of at Onslow Memorial, thanks to the, the staff and the providers that are there. Um, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is last year you might remember that I mentioned the emergency department. Um, that was going to be a focus for us. And we recognized that that's the face of the organization. And so we spent a lot of time on uh, improvements for our ED performance, patient flow, patient satisfaction. Last year, we saw 60,672 patients in our ED. Again, it's the face of the organization. We know that. It also happens to be the entry point for patients who are in the most uncertain and, and vulnerable states. And this past year, we focused on everything we possibly could to improve the patient experience in that emergency department. We reconfigured the ED leadership um, house-wide, the entire, the entire hospital, it's not just the e emergency department, it's the entire hospital that feeds into how well patient flow works in that institution. And after a, a brief um, adjustment period, after switching out some leadership, we've seen some important benchmarks improve, and I'm only going to go over two, but they're two significant ones. The first one is left without being seen. That's a national benchmark that's used for hospital emergency departments, and it should be less than 2%. Back in April, the left without being seen rate was 5.6%. Not great. December, it was 1.42%. 1 1 eight months, folks. That happened in eight months. Um, press gaining satisfaction scores, our patient satisfaction scores, um, in the emergency department have been, again, eight months ago, somewhere between 9th percentile, 11th percentile, 14th percentile, pretty low, pretty abysmal. Um, December, 97th percentile. That's unheard of in eight months to make that leap. Um, we owe it to the staff to do that. That's right, OMH folks, applaud. Um, so we'll continue to work on the ED performance, continue to try to improve that experience for our patients. We owe it to our patients, um, and we're grateful that patients continue to, um, to choose Onzo for healthcare. Another thing that we talked about last year was to uh, continue to develop clinical service lines and do that in partnership and collaboration with other institutions. So we did, uh, through our strategic plan, identify that we needed to build a comprehensive cardiology program. Um, as of October 2017, we installed a state-of-the-art cardiac cath lab, brand new state-of-the-art technology. Um, in partnership with Carolina East Health System and their cardiologists, uh, we actually have the beginnings of a comprehensive cardiology program that will start with diagnostic caths, transition to peripherals, and then coronary interventions. Um, our first cath in our brand new state-of-the-art cardiac cath lab was performed January 30th of 2018. That's, you can applaud. <laughs> Where are you guys? Um, <laughs> <What's wrong? coughs> 
We're also looking to expand our maternal child service line, and I have to, to give a big thank you to our OMH Foundation Board for, and to those of you who went to the gala event this past weekend. Um, they've put a lot of work into raising money um, for our new project, Building for Babies. So um, we will uh, continue to, to support and invest in our maternal child service line. Um, Finally, in order to meet the needs of our community, we've not only purchased brand new state-of-the-art equipment, MRI, CT, ultrasound, but we've expanded the hours of availability to remove all barriers to access that we possibly could. Um, the one that I am the most proud of, um, again, it was hard to identify only three, but the one that I'm the most proud of is the improvements that we had in corporate culture and employee engagement. And again, we didn't do that alone. That comes from um, county commissioners. Our relationship with the county commissioners is wonderful. They're so supportive uh, to the hospital. Um, the, just the transparency, the constant communication, I'm appreciative of that. Our board members, some of whom are here, senior leadership team, you guys are awesome. Um, our department leaders, the staff. The, the staff are so uh, vested in the hospital and the work that we do there, um, as well as our medical staff and providers. Um, the time that I'm going to spend on this is to talk about a survey in particular that's just a little snapshot, a representation of how things have changed. And there's a survey that's out there called the AHRQ uh, Patient Safety Survey. AHRQ stands for Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. Um, this is a patient safety survey that staff are surveyed Designed, it's designed to help uh, hospital assess the culture of safety in their institutions. And hundreds of hospitals across the United States, internationally even, um, have implemented this survey. In 2017, not only did we have the largest response rate since we started taking the survey, which was back in 2008, it's the largest response rate, but we also exceeded um, prior results. We exceeded the national benchmark in 10 of 12 composites for that survey. The prior year, we exceeded one. That's a, in one year's time, we went from exceeding one in 12 composites to 10 in 12 composites. Leapfrog scores, not, thank you. He applauded. Yeah. Um, <laughs> leapfrog score is another one, which is safety grade. Um, this, the leapfrog uh, survey uses national performance measures from various areas and, <clears throat> and combines them. So CMS, leapfrog, hospital survey, AHRQ, um, but Taken together, those measures produce a single letter grade, um, representing the hospital's overall performance and about keeping patients safe. Whereas the first one, AHRQ, is the staff's perception of the culture of safety, this one actually is uh, pulling several different measures from several different grades and, and areas. Onzo Memorial Hospital has achieved a leapfrog score of A in six consecutive publications. That's great. That's, that's impressive, Dr. Deal. Thank you. And uh, since there's been so much praise for the county and county commissioners, how about if we turn to you, David? Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about the mental health uh, task force. The uh, commissioners recognize the crisis revolving around the opioid epidemic in our community. And they also uh, saw a need for a comprehensive approach or solution at, at a local level. They quickly, in, in uh, concert with the city of Jacksonville's leadership, uh, convened this task force. And, and it truly is a representation of a uh, coalition of, of, of the willing who, who want to be part of the solution. Um, it includes everyone from uh, Onslow Memorial Hospital to Craven and Carteret counties, uh, their hospital as well, and of course Trillium. Through a, uh, a generous donation at, well, not donation, a, a generous grant and uh, diligent efforts on the part of uh, Senator Harry Brown, uh, we did secure a $2 million grant to upfit the uh, facility-based crisis center. Um, and of, of the uh, seven partners, there's uh, interlocal agreement. Of course, we're, we're, uh, we're upfitting this facility, but we also need a provider to, uh, to render those services. So the, the seven groups, uh, I'm sorry, seven organizations have gotten together to uh, have a funding mechanism to bring someone here. Uh, because um, honestly, it, it, it is a losing proposition if someone tries to operate on their own, which is why it really went away in 2012. Uh, so, so filling that gap, being, um, being that solution at the local level is, is uh, one of the reasons that we stood up the, the, the Mental Health Task Force. A uh, couple other highlights involve our infrastructure. 
our consolidated human services building um, is, is a one-stop shop for those seeking health and, and social services uh, uh, needs. Um, it houses uh, 330 uh, staff. It's 85,000 square feet on uh, College Street. It, it is in the uh, Jacksonville downtown, so hopefully it'll, it'll serve as, as uh, an engine, hopefully, for some uh, uh, businesses that, that would complement us. Uh, it provides services from uh, everything from clinical hours to uh, uh, food and nutrition services to uh, adult services. Our air traffic control tower um, should be completed by the end of 2018. Uh, we're really looking forward to that because that will expand our uh, service portfolio at the airport. Uh, currently, the, the size of the aircraft and uh, some of the services that, that come in are, are limited. But once we do stand up this, this tower, uh, it, it will, it will uh, eliminate that, that final barrier. Um, so the $5.7 million project is actually being funded through the North Carolina Department of Transportation, the FAA, and uh, local airport revenue. So no property tax dollars are being spent. I know uh, former Commissioner Barbara Eichner will appreciate hearing that. Uh, so an another, another goal that we have in terms of our airport is continuing its economic um, impact and influence locally. Uh, in 2016, there were 370 employees with an estimated economic impact of 237 million. So as we go forward, having that expand and, um, and, and provide that, that gateway into our, uh, our community and expanding that, that, that positive influence and impact that the airport has is, uh, is, is another Thing that we're, we're really uh, looking forward to. Sorry. Very good, David. Um, yeah, that airport, congratulations on that tower. I understand that's been a, a multi-year effort yes. that took nearly a decade to be able to finally realize that. So congratulations to you for that. Um, Mayor Phillips. Good morning, John. Good morning, sir. It's time for you to roll. Go ahead. Well, I, I wanted to mention a, a few of our achievements or accomplishments that we've, be, we've re reached here in Jacksonville during the past year. Uh, I want to thank, first off, I want to thank the Chamber for giving us this opportunity to come and be together and listen to what we all are doing here in our community because uh, we are partners. Uh, everyone at this table is a partner in this community and we, uh, you know, through our work together, uh, we have been able to do a lot of great things for our, our citizens. Uh, as far as our accomplishments in the city, and I'm going to echo a little bit of what David said, uh, I feel like uh, we have created a very positive working relationship between the city and the county. Uh, and we have built upon... Uh, <laughs> and we built upon some of our other successful uh, partnerships that we've uh, made over the years and, and are continuing to do. Um, Commissioner, Commission Chairman Jack Bright sitting back there. He and I worked together. A lot of people might not realize that we worked together for over 30 years at the Jacksonville Police Department. We both retired from that organization. So we're, we're not strangers to each other, along with uh, Commissioner Paul Buchanan. We, we both work together. We kind of know each other. And the nice thing is that we've been able to uh, continue the dialogue uh, that we had in successfully running that organization. But the thing about it is, is we've been able to uh, accomplish so much in such a little time uh, working together. And uh, right after the election back in 2016 and the new commission uh, came on board and, and Commissioner Bright became the chairman of the board, uh, Jack and I had conversations uh, uh, prior to uh, the beginning of the year. And we actually uh, came together with the thought that, hey, Let's sit our two boards down together and let's talk about some issues uh, that are very important to both our bodies, uh, our, organiz our organizations. Uh, and I'm going to underscore one of the things that came out of that, uh, out of that collaboration uh, between us and Oslo County and underscore what David said. We have a crisis, and I'm going to underscore the word crisis in America, not just in America, but in Onslow County, and that's that opioid crisis. 
And David mentioned, as David mentioned, and uh, Dr. Deal here, she's very involved in uh, this collaboration also, is the establishment of a task force uh, to come up with solutions to be able to meet the mental health needs of our citizens of this county and also to uh, approach this epidemic of opioid abuse in our, in our region. Uh, we are well underway uh, in the process of creating that 16-bed facility. Uh, we have several partners uh, that have come on board, uh, not just in Oslo County, but we also have Carter and Craven County that also have expressed interest and have signed on as far as you know, being involved in uh, that endeavor. But it's not just there, I mean, this is a great thing that we've been able to do as, as far as getting this off the ground and, and hopefully by the uh, middle of the year sometime we hope to be operating you know, this facility. Um, also, uh, some of the other things that we've done together uh, have, has been very beneficial to our, our taxpayers because we've been able to do things together very efficiently and very effectively uh, to meet their needs. Um, we also have, you know, our council members at Jacksonville City Council and also the county commissioners, we work together in some other cooperative groups too. We, you know, we have, a, we have some downtown issues that we're trying to work through and, and these don't just affect or impact the city of Jacksonville. They also impact Onslow County because, you know, Onslow County, a, a lot of their center of government still remains in the downtown area. So being able to address some of the situations that, uh, need a little tweaking down there, you know, or something we can work together on to do. We have some other partners, a lot of other partners, uh, many that I, you know, won't mention, but, you know, we've been working together very closely to, again, like I say, uh, uh, you know, approach some of these problems that, that need attention. Um, also with our partners, pardon me, uh, we especially want to ensure uh, that our military uh, get the support they need from us also. Uh, the military is a very important uh, part of this community and you know it is something for us to nurture and ensure that those relationships are, are open and that we are working together to uh, get the things done that need to be done. I'm trying to slim this down a little bit because I know I've, Thank got, you, sir. I've got a record. <laughs> I, I have a record. I'm notorious for having gone long-winded before, but you know when I start talking about the city of Jacksonville and what we do here in the region, it's just kind of unstoppable at times. But I'll, I'll try to make it short. Um, you heard that? <laughs> I have heard that. Uh, last year, I mentioned to you uh, in this room, we, I, I mentioned the One City, My City, Our City campaign. Uh, that we were promoting uh, in the city to bring civility and respect uh, towards one another in our community. Um, I feel like this uh, campaign has worked exceptionally well. Uh, some people kind of looked at it like, well, you know, what's this all about? Well, what it's all about is, is, is just that, that, that respect and civility towards one another, treating people like you want to be treated. Uh, since, that, uh, since the onset of this program, we've amassed over 100,000 signatures on pledges uh, of people that are interested, have taken interest in uh, wanting that civility and respect to be prevalent in our community. Uh, as a result, uh, and as part of that program, we have put together a very strong committee of uh, area faith leaders uh, that have really worked hard as far as uh, advising, promoting communication, and providing counsel to myself uh, in, re in regards to interpersonal relationships between our citizens. And last, I'm going to speak real quickly of uh, one of the things I'm very proud of as far as our accomplishment, and this is an ongoing thing, is the, uh, the clean and green Jacksonville, the clean up and the elimination of the blight that uh, we have in Jacksonville or have had in Jacksonville. This past summer, we reached the 100th demolition of a structure in Jacksonville. We're getting rid of a lot of blight. A lot of it is downtown, but it's not just limited to downtown. But uh, we have uh, been involved in uh, building new affordable housing uh, to replace some of these old dilapidated structures that once sat especially downtown. Uh, this investment by the city has also spur, uh, spurred 
growth in our downtown area. Uh, I see a lot of future, a lot of promise in downtown, and uh, again, going back to that whole collaboration of working with Onslow County, hopefully we're going to, to make our downtown a place that we can be very proud of. Very good. Thank you, Mayor Phillips. Y'all are challenging me. We're going to try to roll off. We're close. We're close, but we did. I don't, I don't want to take back one thing. I, I shortchanged you, uh, General Alford. How's that? Camp Lejeune is the organization that's achieved a 53% reduction in terms of your energy yeah. over the, since 2007, and that's that is monumental. You're thinking about the yeah, we amount got of a, savings that's taking place. Yeah, so we got off we got off of uh, steam and, and coal to produce that steam and 100% uh, natural gas. That's, that's what was done. That. Congratulations. Well, let's, let us uh, turn to the um, the sep second topic, which is challenges and opportunities. Uh, and why don't we start again with you, General Offer? Okay. So, uh, I guess our, our number one challenge is, as you know, this base has been here since the early 40s, and, and there wasn't much out here in 1940. Uh, but as we this the community has grown, the county, the city, and the east coast of uh, North Carolina, uh, the encroachment is always an issue with us. Uh, to be able to continue to train and prepare for war off this platform that we call these, these four bases that I just mentioned earlier is important. Um, and our number one encroachment that we were, we're working with the city, the county, and, and particularly the state is uh, the wind farms up and down the, the coast. A significant impact on our aviation element to be able to train the way we need to to prepare for what we do for this nation. So. Uh, we, we do a lot of work, particularly with the, with the state on this. Uh, we have the the, uh, the Norfolk area that's involved with us, so it's a collaboration between Virginia and uh, North Carolina uh, to, to, to be able to do both, right? We want to produce uh, clean energy, but at the same time, um, with, with Norfolk and uh, uh, Camp Lejeune and Seymour Johnson, you know, significant aviation elements between those those uh, three elements, uh, three different services. Um, this is our number one issue of our challenges. Um, some opportunities and things you probably need to know about, and hopefully you've heard, is about the real ID compliant. So as of January, if, if, if you don't have a, a military ID, a dependent ID, a retiree ID, you gotta have a real ID to get on to a military installation. <laughs> and if you don't have a real ID, you can, still can get on uh, but essentially, you got to have a, a U.S. passport. There are, there are a few other federal IDs that work, but the most common would be a U.S. passport. So we're trying to get that word out. If you could help us with that, um, it's particularly uh, an issue with with the School of Infantry and the uh, our logistics schools over at Camp Johnson, so Geiger and Johnson, because you got a lot of, of parents coming to see their their Marine graduate from those schools. So uh, as uh, you get encourage people to, uh, to go to the uh, driver's license uh, office and, and, and change their ID out. So uh, I'll just stop with those two Very good. issues. Thank you, General. Um, I'm going to break protocol here because I want a clarification on one item you mentioned. I've heard about the real ID mm -hmm. and that a passport would get you on base. Right. For those of us who have a passport, you'd still recommend going oh, yeah. out and getting a real <coughs> well, ID? Well, so in 20, October 2020, I believe is the date, yes, you're going to have to have a real ID to get onto an air airplane mm -hmm. anywhere in the United States. So, And what it essentially is is, is a background check, right? So when you go get one, they, <coughs> they fingerprint you, scan your eyes, and it takes about 15 to 20 days, and they'll mail it to you while they process it. So uh, um, I think in the long run, with with some of the craziness that we've seen in the news, that this is a this is a good thing in the long run to have. Very good, thank you, sir. So it behooves all of us to be able to get that word out. Real ID, October, 2020. I think I think that's, that's right. Um, and we'll uh, get back to all of you on that. So we'll certainly be engaged in, the, in promoting that. Um, so following on, Colonel. Uh, one of the things that uh, <laughs> we we find challenging. This may seem. Uh, uh, kind of trivial to some, but uh, planning uh, aboard this air station. So we're relatively small staff, and we we uh, when we buy buildings. We buy buildings for 60 years. You know, it's like a it's like a marriage. 
you know. Worse. <laughs> some some marriages, I guess, but uh, uh, but pay for it. But our but our funding cycle is done in five years, so you can see how you try to make decisions that are gonna that you're gonna have to live with for the next sixty years, um, with. Uh, and, and the further out in that timeline you go, the greater the unknowns are. You know, so we have hangars here that have seen, uh, on this air station today, uh, with no plan to replace, that have seen four generations of aircraft already. You know, so as you, as you go down timelines, you know, things like electrical power and that sort of thing um, may not be compatible and you have to come back and retrofit and things like that. So, so what we call our station master planning effort. Uh, that's, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not easy to do, and uh, uh, we put a lot of effort into that. We're going to put a lot of effort into that in the uh, next couple of years and try to establish a, a vision so that we're spending those taxpayer dollars uh, the best that we absolutely can. Thank you, sir. Um, speaking a little bit about planning and um, funding, uh, I know that's a topic of conversation at the city, Mayor. So would you yes, like to talk uh, a little bit about that a couple of minutes? Right, just a couple of minutes, you say? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know that's a challenge. But it is a challenge. That's one of my on. biggest challenges. But <laughs> as far as the city is concerned, uh, we are, uh, we are ex still experiencing a lot of commercial growth in Jacksonville, which we're very proud of. Uh, you know, we you know, haven't grown up in this town and being over 60 years old, I've seen the town go from we small to now there's a lot of choices for the folks that live in our city and those uh, folks that are attached here through the military. I know it's a pleasure for them to be able to get out and go shopping or go to restaurants and all that are uh, openly uh, big choices, a lot of choices. Uh, but the challenge we have is being able to keep up with the infrastructure needs that are, are required to uh, maintain uh, this uh, growth. Uh, I think up to now we've done a pretty good job of doing that, uh, but it's something we got to continually stay on top of in order to make sure that we're doing it in the most cost-effective, e efficient way. You know, that old term of smart growth. We got to be able to grow smartly. We got to be able to look not just for today, but for tomorrow. Uh, as far as how we go about uh, growing our city. Uh, Jacksonville does continue to be the regional leader in commerce as far as uh, uh, this region is concerned and we want to make sure that we continue to uh, uh, strive to, to, to make sure that that is, continues to be the reality. Um, other things uh, that we do here in Jacksonville, we're always trying to improve the value of living within our city. Um, we have over well, not over. We have a, r around 600 employees with the city of Jacksonville that could, that perform services daily for our citizens. Um, we have a lot of uh, we we have a lot of uh, folks in, in the uh, public safety, parks, uh, uh, fire, uh, police, sanitation. Again, like I said, we have, we have a lot of folks doing a lot of things to provide the services that our citizens have uh, come to, to realize that uh, they like. Uh, and it's a benefit to live in the city to have this available. And you know, we want to uh, continue to uh, do this effectively. We want to also ensure our military partners, partnerships stay robust. We, we have a very good relationship with our military. We work closely together and a lot of times we, uh, you know, it's better to uh, to work together to get things done uh, because a lot of times you, you stop a lot of duplication and uh, uh, unnecessary uh, cost to your taxpayers when you can kind of sit down and, 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 and work on things together that, you know, for the common good that uh, can be done more efficiently. And I think we've done that through, you know, our relationship with Onslow <coughs> County with the military. I know that we've uh, worked together as far as our cooperative planning group, uh, as far as identifying uh, issues that need to be addressed that, that benefit both the on-base population and all. Uh, but those are the things that we uh, keep on looking at. And also our economic development activities, uh, we, we stay, try to stay on top of that and ensure that our economy continues to grow. And I'm gonna That's stop important. right there. That's very good. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, David, a little bit about the county. I know you're facing some of the same issues, we, we, opportunities. We are, we are. 
One of the directions that the commissioners are wanting Onslow County to go is increase our transparency. No matter how open you are, they're not just their direction, their mandate is we will be more open. So in that vein, we have been looking at several avenues to facilitate that. Of course, we're taking advantage of technology, but some of the areas that we're really drilling down to is accessibility of information. How do we make it easily accessible so that you don't have to necessarily really do more than a simple query? If it's a public record, the commissioners want it out there for you to find it. We're doing the public's work, but for serving this community, we would not exist. So moving forward there, we're actually looking at some really innovative things. One of them is report sharing and open data sites, which is just phenomenal how far the technology has truly come to make you an open book to the community that you serve, which is where they would like to see us go and where I would like to be a part of that. The other thing that I would like to quickly mention is our strategic planning initiative. We're undertaking our first ever strategic planning effort, and we're titling it Strategy for Success. It'll enable us to move forward as an organization into the future with a unified vision and mission for Onslow County government. And it will not just be short term, it will be more transcendent. It will be long term. These goals and objectives will be broad enough that it could encompass 20 years from now. I would say that look for March or April. We're going to be engaging our community. The citizens, there will be a survey going out. We'll be asking for your feedback, the vision and mission, correction, the vision that you would like to see Onslow County moving in. And then on the heels of that, in May of this year, the commissioners will be meeting to take that feedback and develop that vision, mission statement, drilling down into goals and objectives. And then ultimately, at the conclusion of that, there would be performance measures. So why is that important? We can tell you we're doing a good job. We can tell you we think we need to make improvements here or there. But if we have real data points, performance measures that have been vetted and validated by the community, by the commissioners, and by the staff, and then we put that up in a dashboard that provides real-time feedback on how we're actually doing, then I think that, again, adds to the validity of when we tell you we think we're doing a good job or we think we can improve in this area, we actually have those data points to back it up. I think I'm out of time. Very good. Nicely done, David. Take the next step. I know that public education doesn't really face any challenges at all. But let's give you a couple of minutes just to be able to talk about opportunities, maybe a little bit of challenges to go along with that. So, well, first of all, Rick? thank you, John Stemmees. He's been instrumental in helping us as a partnership um, that he's involved with. Um, we have STEM labs and a number of grants that actually come from Stemmees. So thank you, John, for a being a leader to, work with um, you. to help us in that. You all done a great job thank you. with that. Um, you know, our infrastructure, we heard about that um, throughout the table. You know, that's one of our biggest. We're the 12th largest school district now in the state. Um, we just opened up Dixon Middle this year, and we're proud of that. We moved fifth grade over there, but guess what? Fifth grade got <laughs> filled up pretty quick uh, and replaced over there at that elementary school, just K-4. Opening up Richlands Elementary, brand new, coming up this year in August. We're excited about that. Uh, we have a career center getting ready um, in Burton Park, and thank you to the commissioners for helping that and all the partners on that. And, and that's going to be a partnership, and Harry Brown was instrumental in that, and letting Duplin and Jones and and Camp Adjourn as well coming on and, and being part of that and we're going to be able to offer a lot of services but that's part of our 
challenges as well to, to stay ahead of the game. We've been recognized as the first global school district in the state, and we're proud of that, but we're also proud that uh, we're trying to serve our kids um, in, a no, in a number of th different capacities. Our biggest challenge is going to be recruiting teachers um, as we grow, and it's getting harder and harder to recruit teachers, and recruiting volunteers. We thank, thanks for everybody in this room. You volunteered in some way, in some capacity, and we continue to need to have that in our schools. And mentors, um, very big in our society. We talk about social and emotional, and that's affecting our schools as well. Um, so, but mentors are a big plus, and, and thank you for what you do on that. But we're, we're, we're going to continue to look and seek out. We've got to build a new school soon again, starting in 19, and have more conversations um, as we come along. So, we have a lot of opportunity in front of us and how we educate our, our youth, but um, we're going to continue to reach out, and we're always open for discussion on how we can improve. Um, each of our schools in your community. Very good. Thank you, Rick. Congratulations on that global school recognition, too. That, Thank you. Uh, as we move forward, that's going to be incredibly important to, uh, to all of us. You think about the Marine Corps as a global entity, you've, you've really got to have that perspective in that. Um, Dr. Heatherly, add on to that. Do you, want to, do you want to hit challenges? <laughs> Don't, um, I, I think you'll recognize a common theme here uh, when, I, when I finish with my uh, few remarks on this particular uh, issue. But um, over the past 20 years, there have been two statewide bond referendums which have benefited the college. One most recently, uh, and we hope to see the benefit of that very soon. But uh, in 2000, uh, the bond referendum uh, enabled the college uh, to put in a number of improvements. One, which you don't really see necessarily, but it's in, in, uh, along the lines of what Colonel Burton has mentioned and General Alford. Um, we, we did take steps to improve our heating and cooling uh, systems across our campus, uh, and we did convert most of our buildings to a geothermal uh, system, which, by the way, paid for itself in, in six years as far as its energy efficiency. Uh, so that was one. Uh, another. Uh, that you may not realize the real benefits of has to do with the walkways that have been put in place on our campus, which really uh, aesthetically I think is great, but had uh, as much if not more to do with better connections for our buildings with fiber optics, uh, as well as a safer place at night to, to light those walkways. Uh, safety just about trumps everything these days, as you know. Uh, and thirdly, and I think just as importantly, we were able to uh, construct the Billy Mills Math and Science uh, Technology Building. And those walkways in that building, I think, if you were here 15, 20 years ago, and you can compare what you remember the college was then as far as its appearance and what it is now, I think it made it, those, those uh, projects made a major difference in the image uh, of your college. Uh, some other good things uh, have happened in that regard, especially when it comes to the support of our county commissioners. I cannot say enough about what our county commissioners have been able uh, to do with us. Most recently, just this past year, we uh, occupied our newest building, which is the Institutional Support Services Building, uh, which was supported totally by our county commissioners. Um, with this newest bond referendum that passed on the state level in 2016, we now hope to have another uh, classroom building in the near future over the next two years. And with all that, what I, what I do need to add here is we do have, I know it looks great, but we have aging facilities on our campus. Uh, if you uh, were to walk across our campus and, and take a look at our buildings, of the 16 that we have on our campus, 12 were actually constructed under the watch of our founding president, Dr. Leroy Henderson. So that means that they are anywhere from 30, 30 to 45 years of age. Uh, and I will say, and uh, Representative Cleveland, if you, if you repeat this to the, my fellow presidents, I will call you a liar. But, <laughs> but I, our funding on a state level uh, is adequate. I'm, I didn't say great, but I mean, it, it, it is adequate as far as oper operations of the college. Operationally, we do, we do quite well. Uh, I will tell you, though, when it comes to our facilities, um, that's, that's a whole other issue. And I think uh, not only for, the, for your community college, but for the state system as a whole, that will be the challenge in the future, is staying abreast of the, of the, the technology, uh, coming up with and, and improving our facilities to, to meet the needs 
uh, for the workforce and the training that's necessary uh, in, 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 today's, in today's world. Um, it's, uh, with all that, I will tell you that without the county commissioners, you would not see your culinary arts and hospitality management program, which has been, uh, from what I can see, uh, f very favorably accepted by this community. And if you've not been, I encourage you to go. It's just a vibrant uh, environment. It is an example of what your community college is able to do in, in training and providing these young people uh, to be viable, tax-paying citizens upon uh, graduation. Uh, we, uh, that doesn't mean that we're at a halt here. I mean, there are a lot of different programs, I think, that, are, are, that need consideration, <clears throat> especially an expansion in the health field. Uh, entrepreneurship, uh, first responder training, uh, even fine arts. I mean, there's a, there's a number uh, of programs that need attention, and quite frankly, we just don't have a place to put them. Uh, we, we talk regularly of, the, of what the needs might be and what we might be able to do, but that is our dilemma. Uh, we are, that doesn't mean we're, we've stopped. I mean, we're still looking, for example, at those things which may not require uh, elaborate facilities, such as truck driver training, which we hope to get into very soon. Uh, we just purchased uh, one or two uh, trucks for that purpose. Uh, we're also, I've talked with um, uh, the CEO of Duke Energy as well as the CEO at Jones uh, Onslow uh, EMC. That would be Jeff Clark. The Jeff Clark did, did not get Man of the Year. <laughs> and uh, Steve, please, oh, he left, good. Oh, he is, <laughs> but they will tell you that we're headed for a crisis when it comes to uh, positions for electrical linesmen over the next uh, 10 years. So that is a program which we are now looking into starting within this next year. So uh, the, those are programs that don't require, I mean a, a classroom will work but basically they're going to be, the training will take place outside. So that's, that's, that's really what we're limited to at this point. Uh, but without, without major consideration uh, on a state level as well as a local level, we, we are going to need to come up with the facilities to meet the needs for our graduates. Facilities will, are definitely a challenge. That's absolutely, a, that's, absolutely. That's one that certainly now, faces everybody. With that, l let me just say, I ha I kudos go to all the folks at this table uh, in, in working with the community college to provide a meaningful uh, and state-of-the-art experience educationally. I mean, we have clinical sites at Oslo Memorial, at the Medical Center, at Camp Lejeune. Uh, we have additional classroom spaces and offices, not only at Camp Lejeune, but also here at Marine Corps Air Station. We have a joint arrangement with the city of Jacksonville in the use of the, the target system uh, just outside of town. Uh, those things, uh, without, without cooperation, without our working together, you would not have nearly uh, the opportunities that exist at your community college, and that is very much appreciated. Good looking Thank forward. You. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Penny. A couple of minutes on it's my turn? yours, All right, well, come challenges or cut, opportunities. Cut me off if you need me. Did you say healthcare expansion? I do. He did. Do you need do. help with that? Uh, I do. All right, um, just let me know. All right. As difficult as it was to identify two or three things that we're really proud of, the challenge was really obvious. So, and that is uh, maintaining financial stability in the current healthcare environment. And I need to thank the Chamber of Commerce who um, really tried to help us get the word out to folks what healthcare currently looks like um, through a forum Onslow a few months ago and the North Carolina Healthcare Association actually came in and did a presentation in that uh, forum Onslow um, just to, like I said, kind of lay the groundwork and get the word out on what's going on uh, financially. With the advent of the Affordable Care Act um, several years ago, the healthcare landscape changed significantly. And for hospitals and providers alike, the focus shifted from, um, it, it was suddenly placed on value-based care, which is a good thing. Um, but it shifted the emphasis from inpatient care to outpatient care, from acute to preventative care, from volume to value, um, where we don't function in a fee-for-service based world anymore, but the provision of care is based on quality metrics, again, a good thing, and um, expense relative to resources. So this was a significant paradigm shift from the way that it used to be. Um, we knew it was coming, um, but there was uncertainty as to when we would see uh, fully the financial impact that would hit as a result of that. Um, and, of course, we adjusted accordingly over time, um, trying to build up outpatient services, again, with that shift from inpatient to outpatient. But uh, just to give you a basis for comparison, for every one inpatient, you need three to four outpatients just to remain at the same level of profitability. Um, not something you can change easily or quickly. Um, given that last year alone, uh, we provided $50 million in uncompensated care to Onslow County. Um, that's 
almost an untenable situation uh, financially. And additionally, most of you recognize that we have multiple health care um, entities in Onslow County to include Wilmington Health, New Hanover Regional, Viden, Carolina East. Um, they're contending with the same financial constraints that we are, and they've deliberately decided with intention to kind of branch out in other areas to, to you know, pull revenue. But what that has done for us is chipped away at our market share. Uh, so it contributes to the difficult situation that we're in. The challenge for all of us, though, including those other entities, is to work together to provide quality care to our patients locally. Keep them here. Keep our patients here in Onslow County. We need to think about health care regionally um, with availability of the providers and, and the services and put the patients and their families at the center. I, I firmly believe that it's a great disservice to our patients and their families to make them travel an hour away from home uh, to receive health care that they could receive at Onslow Memorial Hospital or surge care or ambulatory surgery setting. Um, as health care providers in this community, we need to put our patients first and not direct care away from their home. Good. You're good. Oh, you're good. <laughs> Thank you're you. Good. Spread that around. So I know in terms of, I'll just mention it, recruitment <laughs> is always it's an issue for oh, yes, a lot of institutions, organizations. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about that later. Milling them out. Um, we are, uh, we're running um, pretty close to being on time. So we'll finish in terms of the, the third topic is our future together. What I'll ask you to do is in terms of taking about one minute um, so we can hit it and, and that is gonna be a challenge. So why don't we just start at the very far end of the table. Rick. One minute. Well, I'm, I'm, I wanted to um, also say to Dave, Dr. Hutterly that we have an early college that we didn't mention that has done phenomenal, I think, in, in reaching out for those students that are helping earn a two-year degree over time and, and we're growing. So when he talks about infrastructure at his school, we have 50 students who's going to grow to 200 students over there in four years. So thank you for allowing that to happen. It's been a real positive. As I told you, I approached that with uh, cautious optimism, but uh, it's, been, it's been a delight. You wouldn't even know that those students are there, to be honest with you. And I understand we have another 98 or so applications of qualified applicants, and we're going to have to make a hard decision on the next, what, 60 students that will enter in August. So that's great. So we're excited about that. So, um, and we're excited about the other opportunities that we have coming forward to us, and uh, we're always waiting for legislation to change and, and tell us what our next direction will be. But, but <laughs> Representative Cleveland, thank you for being part of that. Um, but we do have a good dialogue with our folks here and, and our representation, and our board does a great job of working and, and, and making sure our policies, and, and one of our biggest concerns is the security of our schools, as this is on everybody's minds in, each and every day. And, um, it's a constant challenge for us in terms of how to, how to address that, but I thank everybody in this room for uh, being very supportive to our school system. And that definitely requires a partnership. Since both of you spoke, that's two minutes. So, <laughs> Mayor easy. Phillips, one minute for you, sir. Okay, one minute. Uh, all right, we start the clock now, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, I think our future lies in our ability, like I, can, I said before, was our, our ability to increase and uh, sustain the collaboration that we have with all of our community partners and trying to get you know, the best uh, possible benefit for our citizens and to improve and keep the quality of life high here in Onslow County and Jacksonville. Uh, we have an obligation here with our military uh, guests here to work, uh, or our military family here to work with them closely and ensure that the bases are protected and that we uh, uh, make uh, is, is give as much value as we can as far as helping them train and support their uh, per people. Uh, we also want to explore even more how we can collaborate uh, for beneficial partners as, as far as service delivery and cost savings and then also we want to ensure that we provide the support for military families uh, it, to make this the most military friendly city that we can because of, let's face it, I mean, our, our economy, our, our being kind of depends a lot on our military presence here. Thank you. Very good. Oh, you did extremely well. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Penny. Um, I would have to say that I looked around the room here while I was listening to the other speakers and this is actually the year of collaboration. I can see several different um, um, partners that we've collaborated with over the year, the, the health department, county, the city, law enforcement, uh, 
Naval Hospital Medical Center. Um, just there's, there's so many folks that we have worked with and collaborated with through the year that what I would like to see in the future, as far as working together, to bring to completion the Acute Crisis Center, because I totally agree with you, that addresses our <coughs> mental health issue, um, but uh, is to just continue and build upon the partnerships that we've already established for this year. Fantastic, David. Thank you. I, I mentioned in the achievement the facility-based crisis center. Uh, that, of course, is a is a first step. And moving forward, uh, the collaborative, impactful uh, uh, cooperation of of multiple organizations, I think, will take us into a comprehensive uh, opioid epidemic response uh, program or plan, if you will. Um, Moving forward, I, I know that the uh, commissioners and the city of Jacksonville City Council, we, we identified that, that uh, gap. We uh, convened that task force and, and moving forward, uh, although the, the uh, facility-based crisis center is not open, I know I've got 60 seconds, uh, is, is not open. Um, I'm trying to adjust on the flyer. Uh, we, we've, we've, as a community, already started looking to that next step, what what are those um, next components that we need to put in place to build upon this this keystone? Um, and just a few examples: the the long-term treatment facility is an obvious one, but also that prevention and education, um, having that intervention before it becomes an issue for the individual, and then also uh, some of the other things that we're doing um, and will continue to do is the uh, naloxone. Uh, intervention that actually saves lives. So with all of those component pieces building um, on, on each other, I think that will take us into the future and that would be one piece that I would like to come back and report on um, as one of our most successful collaborative efforts as a community next year. Very good. Thank you, David. Loxa not only saves lives, saves money yes. as well, if you can keep those folks out of the hospital. Um, we're in pretty good shape. They did pretty well, Colonel Merton. So uh, considering in terms of the prominence of the Marine Corps in this community, we're going to be able to allow you a couple of extra minutes. So if you would, <laughs> go ahead and talk about your, uh, in terms of community future together. I think the, um, I think the partnerships and the uh, intergov intergovernmental service agreements that we've been working on over the last year with the Mickey East G7, I think those are... Uh, I think those are great initial steps, and we've seen a lot of progress in that, but I, I'm, I'm particularly excited about what we're going to uncover over the, the near term and even the longer term as to where are there other opportunities to do that. And I bring up an example of um, we do a sexual assault uh, response uh, meeting uh, with uh, the folks from the installations and the folks that, from out in town. We did a meeting here a couple months ago, and one of the things that came out was um, um, uh, doing a video together to bring up awareness and that sort of thing. I think, I think that sort of thing illustrates the hidden gems that are out there that we haven't, uh, we haven't uncovered yet. But uh, I look forward to uh, working with the people in this room to, to find those hidden gems and, and uh, identify other opportunities to cooperate with one another. Thank you very much. All right. Last. So the, I think the most significant um, opportunity for the future over the next 10 years uh, is going to be uh, we have seven squadrons of F-35 coming to Cherry Point. Um, that's uh, almost 100 aircraft, 94 aircraft, I believe it is. But most importantly, it's, it's going to bring in uh, a significant amount of jobs and money because of we got to build uh, four hangars. And these hangars are uh, two per squadron, so the fourth one will house the simulator and uh, the headquarters for the Marine uh, Air Group, the uh, MAG-14 that commands those seven squadrons. Um, a little over a billion dollars to build those four hangars because they're, they're essentially uh, uh, secret skiffs in order to bring the, these aircraft in. So um, the change in our aviation and the change to this community because of that is going to be significant over the next 10 years. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do together to get this thing right, and uh, we look forward to working with the community as we move forward. Very good. Thank you, General. Uh, the one thing I'll add is uh, working together, thinking in terms of outside your borders. A couple of you mentioned regional 
Of course, that's dear to my heart, being a regional economic development organization. Um, but uh, that element in terms of those squadrons coming in and uh, the mention uh, you mentioned earlier about protecting those flight paths, um, that's important for all of us across this region. Uh, so certainly it is for this community, for the Goldsboro community, for Havelock, um, but also those beyond because there are an awful lot of people that commute um, in to work at these installations from outside these counties. And there are an awful lot of service providers that depend upon these communities and these installations for their livelihood. So it's a constant message that we need to get across um, on it is in terms of the significance of these installations, that what they do for this economy, and the dependency that we all have. Um, even those communities that are pretty far reach from Jacksonville or Havelock or Goldsboro. And that's a constant reminder that we need to put out to people. So it behooves all of us to be able to communicate that message, I think. I want to congratulate the, uh, the panel for the job well done, uh, maintaining uh, pretty good discipline, staying on time. I want to really co um, congratulate uh, Lorette for um, thinking in terms of this um, uh, concept of delivery method and being smart enough to choose somebody from the outside to come in and be the, the watchdog for it. So <laughs> well done. That wraps us up, I believe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, if we would give a round of applause for our panel. Thank all of you for joining us today and be sincere. What do you think about the new format compared to years past? <laughs> okay. And I want to give credit to Richard Woodruff because Richard was the one that brought the idea to us. He brought everyone together as a group and said, let's give it a try. So Richard, thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> I want to again thank our panel of experts for being with us today, our signature sponsor, Jones Onslow, EMC, the chamber staff, and of course our dear friends here at the Air Station Oak Club. Give them a round of applause. And as the Chamber always does, we're at one event and we're already thinking about the next one. So I want to invite everyone to the Business Expo that was going to be March 22nd from 10 to 4 at the Jacksonville Commons. An opportunity to see more than 100 businesses and get an idea of the products and services that they offer to our area. Oh, and admission is free. So thank you again and we stand adjourned. I haven't had the pleasure of going out to meeting with Colonel Meyer.